Hi, welcome back. So this man that I want to talk about today has meant a lot in my life. His name is Reverend Sam Young Moon, and I like to share about his life. I now go to his son's church, uh, Sean Moon, in Newfoundland, PA. He's a chosen heir by his father. Before he, di before he died, he was chosen by his father, and he was crowned actually three times to be co-heir with Christ. Check it out on YouTube under the Rod of Iron Kingdom. There's Sunday service and also King's Report daily. God has given me much love and grace in my life. Plus, he's given me a great husband and five great boys, now men. And the family keeps growing. Now I even have two daughter-in-laws. So my daughters are coming. Okay, let us start. Sun Young Moon was born on January 6, 1920 into a family of farmers, which I can really relate to. I came from a farmer's family that had tilled the land for centuries. As a boy, he studied at a Confucian school and was a keen observer of the natural world. He loved nature. Around 1930, his parents became fervent Christians. They became Presbyterians. And the young Sun Young Moon became a Sunday school teacher. At that time, Japan ruled Korea. And actually many Koreans became Christians at that time. They even, call, even called uh, it like almost like Jerusalem of the East was uh, Pyongyang up in North Korea. Anyway, Japan ruled Korea and was trying to force the practice of the Shinto religion onto all Koreans. The religious intolerance of the Japanese regime was one fa facet of the contempt they held for the Koreans, a, a people they believed to be inferior the Korean people were subjected to 40 years of humiliation and cruelty as part of Japan's greater Asian co-prosperity sphere. Growing up oppressed in his own land, Sun Young Moon learned early the pain of injustice, whether among his own people or at the hands of the Japanese rulers. The Young Moon became intensely aware of human suffering and the failure of humanity to create a loving and just world. He sought to understand why people were suffering and how suffering can be ended. From going to church, he knew that religion addressed the fundamental human condition and promised an ideal world to those who obey God. He wanted to build God's kingdom, like Jesus came to build God's kingdom. But he saw that established religions, although centuries old and based on scriptures offering revel revelatory insight, were in practice unable to answer many of life's questions or solve the deepest problems facing, facing hum humankind. Troubled by the immense gap between religious ideals and the actual state of the world, he began his own ardent pursuit of solution to a life of prayer and study especially of the Bible. He wrote this poem as a young man, around 15, 16 years old. It's called Crown of Glory. When I doubt people, I feel pain. When I judge people, it's unbearable. When I hate people, there's no value to my existence. Yet if I believe, I'm deceived. If I love, I'm betrayed. Suffering and grieving tonight, my head in my hands, am I wrong? Yes, I'm wrong. Even though we are deceived, we still must believe. Though we are betrayed, still forgive. Love completely even those who hate you. Wipe your tears away and welcome with a smile those who know nothing but deceit and those who betray without regret. O oh, Master, the pain of loving, look at my hands. Place your hand on my chest. My heart is bursting, such agony. But when I loved those who acted against me, I brought victory. If you have done the same thing, I'll give you the crown of glory. This is by Sun Myung Moon. So in 1935, Moon was called by Jesus Christ. It was an early Easter morning, 1935. Jesus appeared to the young Sun Myung Moon as he was praying in the Korean mountains. This is a tradition of many Christians in Korea. They will get up like four o'clock in the morning and climb the mountains to pray or go to church and pray. In that vision, Jesus asked him to continue the work 
which he had begun on earth nearly 2,000 years before. Jesus asked him to complete the task of establishing God's kingdom on earth and bringing peace to humankind. The young Korean was stunned by this encounter, and especially by the request that had been made of him. And at first, he refused. However, after deep reflection, meditation, and prayer, he pledged to take on the overwhelming mission. And now I go to an interview uh, that Reverend Moon gave of Frederick Sontag, who wrote the book Sun Myung Moon and the Unification Church. It, sh it shows a lot about Reverend Moon. So Reverend Moon speaking. As you probably know, I have given my life, my honor, my entire family, everything I have, into this movement. Unless I was certain I had something absolutely right, I wouldn't have done that. I know there's something real on my side. So anybody who joins me will not be a loser. I'm not working at random or just on a whim. Our movement has a deep spiritual origin. It came into being at this particular time by a mandate of God. I have a divine guiding light. Even though many people think I'm just doing things my own way, there is no such thing as my own way. And Sontag is asking, if you feel that God elected Korea for a special role in the development of religion today, could you say a little more about why you think Korea is the place chosen for God's action in the present time? Reverend Moon, Korea has several very unique characteristics. First of all, the Korean people are homogeneous, united people. Second, they are very religious. They naturally have a deep religious understanding. Third, they understand suffering. Throughout history, the Korean people have gone through tremendous ordeals and hardship. Under these conditions, the Korean people have developed an undying spirit of loyalty and dedication. These are the most important characteristics for a people to be chosen by God because they match God's own personality. Throughout history, no one has suffered more than God. He has suffered because his own children fell away from him. Ever since the fall, God has been working tirelessly for the restoration of mankind. People do not know this broken-hearted aspect of God. In order to really understand God's suffering and to establish a report with him, the three characteristics I mentioned before are very important. The chosen people of Israel had these characteristics I mentioned before 2,000 years ago. Today, Korea has much in common with God's heart. From their own experience of suffering and tragedy, Koreans can readily understand God's sorrow and broken heart. They can readily respond to the call of God. In this respect, we can also answer why God has chosen me as his instrument talking about Reverend Moon, at this time of the providence. The same things can be said about me. I have an unchanging will. I'm deeply religious, and I too have been tested and strengthened by tribulations and hardship. When God revealed himself and his mission to me, I could readily understand his heart. I couldn't help but weep. I determined then to give my life completely to ease his broken heart. It's been my honor and privilege since then to carry his sorrow on my shoulders. My every action is to liberate God from his sorrow. Okay, I'm going to stop here this time. So more next time about River Moon, uh, even going to communist death camp. I'll share about that next day. Well, well have a wonderful day and uh, say a little prayer reflect on what you just heard may god bless you and guide you may his kingdom come have a great day bye bye